Welcome to Metro 2033. Now, Metro, without question, is the most requested game for the achievement grind, and this really came as a shock to me. I guess I kind of underestimated its fan base a little bit, but nevertheless, I am really excited to be able to bring this to you today, as I've only played this game once, and it was many years ago. So today, we're going to go through and collect all 49 achievements, and to see if this game deserved to be the number one pick for the channel. So, let's get straight into it. Welcome to the achievement grind. Now, first thing I want to mention or pre-apologise for is no doubt my butchering of names and places. I can barely speak English, so I will try not to butcher the Russian names and language too hard. So, let's continue. In 2013, a nuclear war destroyed the Earth, killing billions. Moscow has now become a desolate wasteland filled with unimaginable mutated horrors. Now, a handful of survivors manage to hide in the metro tunnels, living off scraps and growing mushrooms for food. And the game starts with us playing as Artyom, joined by our friend Miller on the way to the surface to complete a mission. When we reach the surface, we are immediately attacked by mutated demons called the Nosalis. Nosalis? I'm going to be calling them the Nosalis. These are the main enemies of the game, besides other human factions. After passing them, we head outside to walk towards a tower before a rather reckless driver almost flattens us. These two are more of our friends, however before we can get familiar and friendly a huge wave of Nosalis sprint past us. They're clearly on a mission, and who are we to stop them? Well, until one of them decides to attack and now we're facing an army of them. Moments later and several friends deaths later we fall over, the car that nearly ran us over gets flipped by a demon before coming in for us. The game cuts to black and we travel back 8 days earlier, definitely an interesting start to Metro. When we join back, we are with Artyom chilling in his bed, the absolute lazy git, staring at postcards of world famous landmarks, before Alex interrupts us and asks us to follow him. When we leave our shack, we see the true effect that the war has had. Every walkway is claustrophobic as we squeeze through buildings and people to make our way through. We approach a door and the crimson chin lets us in. In here are bodies and people near death, really cementing that, you know, life could be better. When we approach the main gate though, they open the overcomplicated door to let in a fellow ranger returning from the outside. This is Hunter, and he's lovely. So lovely in fact that he found us another postcard for our wall. But before I can even thank him very kindly for the gift, we are about to be attacked and need to defend ourselves from the Nosalis about to enter. And right on cue they arrive, alarms blaze and they quickly break into the room. Fortunately though, besides the odd barrage of hits, we fend them off pretty well. Now even though we have won the war, we find out an enemy called the Dark Ones who can attack people through their mind have destroyed an outpost at a place called Exhibition. So we need to rush to the ruins to see what happened. And yeah, everybody's dead Dave. Hunter then says that he needs to investigate, and he gives us his dog tags. If he doesn't make it back, we are to head to the police station and talk to a man called Miller. His dog tags are proof that we are not lying. Hunter did in fact not return, so now we need to travel to Polis. And with a caravan heading that way and needing guards, we signed up to travel. We stock up on bullets, guns and gas masks in case we find ourselves outside, and eventually find the caravan and hop on board to protect it and our comrades with our life. Another man also asks to join in which we allow him. I mean, if we get attacked it's going to be great to have a meat shield. However, when we get the wind through our hats, something's off, and I'm not just talking about the shadow children walking about crying, as if that isn't enough. But before we can question what the feck is going on, everybody passes out as a weird electricity orb follows us. But when we awake, we awake in some form of vision or a dream like place or something, with Hunter rejecting a hug from a Dark One. The Dark One then looks at us and leaves, also taking some bullets in the back for his trouble, before we then wake up again. When we awake, everybody is passed out, and since we're no doubt moments away from being attacked ourselves, we need to pedal. The Nasalis then appear and surprisingly kill the extra random man, and then go to try to kill us. But we're simply put together better, and with a new shotgun we carve our way through beautifully. Now, we may be good at shooting, but we are terrible at balance, and we are pushed off the cart. But thankfully, only a few steps away is the next outpost which helped carve through the Nasalis like butter. We then go inside. After having a drink to celebrate our survival, we then carry on with the mission. Right now, we find a boy who then says that somebody wants to talk to us, and that somebody's called Bourbon. Now, Bourbon hears of our survival and he wants our help in making it to a place called the Dry Station, and in return, he will give us his AK. He does this because the station is now in lockdown, and we need to take a much more dangerous path to get there. We, of course, agree, because there wouldn't be much of a game if we didn't, and we start to make our way through the tunnels. And heading through, we find that a group of bandits have taken over a base in the tunnels. 
and instead of taking them out peacefully or quietly, I accidentally trip a shotgun and results in them all knowing where we are and they try to kill us. However, we soon dispatch them with haste and carry on. Eventually, we find a graveyard and whilst Bobbin gets the door open, we loot every single corpse in here. Or we would, but then the visions or the dreams or whatever they are return. This time, we are down a path and there is wind pushing us away from the door and we must fight through it, which I found out after I'd already died from it. The next time, however, we make it to the gate and struggle to get us and Bobbin through it. And also, Bobbin is losing his mind throughout this entire scene. It's kind of bizarre, but a dark one then grabs us and pulls us through and we wake up into the real world once again. We then arrive at a station called the Market as another horde of Nautilus sprint to attack us. Now, Bobbin knows the Market as he owes money to them, so the people inside help take care of the horde and we soon enter. Honestly, nothing too much to mention here. We restock on gear, have a go on the shooting range and then meet up with Bobbin again. And also, no, we haven't got a single achievement yet. Something that was kind of concerning me, until I realised that most of the achievements are kill and gun related with only a couple of story related ones. So don't worry, we will get to them soon, <laughs> you will see. We then travel to the surface with Bobbin to make it closer to the dry station. This is also where we are officially introduced to the demons, horrible mutated bats that are pretty intense to face but we avoid certain death by sneaking into a nearby building. Now, the paths ahead are full of Nosilis and moments of insanity with the Dark Ones whispering into our ears. And no, not in the soothing, calming way. And the weirdness carries on when we eventually make it to a playground. It is deserted and it is gross, but with a bright flash, we can see what it once used to be. And when we shoot a child in the head, we are transported back and see in the distance another Dark One run off. And no, I will not be taking questions on how my instinct was to shoot a child. We're just going to move on. And we're actually going to move on, thankfully, to our first achievement, as when we wipe down our mask for the 20th time, we unlock the achievement Who Goes There. Ah, much better. Finally nice to have one on the board. But pushing through further, I for some reason decide to get real brave and take on a demon. I regret this, as they are absolute bullet sponges and can really mess you up. It takes us a good 10 minutes nearly to take one down because admittedly I was being a bit of a coward, but we eventually, as I said, put it down. And even it dying scared me. Ah! Oh, it's dead! <laughs> But with new balls of steel and freshly shat underwear, we eventually find Bobbin again. When we do, we are then, of course, attacked by another wave of Nosilis. But when the demons rock up to the party, we decide it's probably time to head on home, and we find the perfect point to do so as we jump back into the metro station. Now we're told immediately that this is a bandit station, and we can either sneak through the station or take the fight to them as Bobbin is found and captured. Now we all know what path I'm about to take, and that's the path of running through guns a blazing trying to find our friend. End. We expertly kill the bandits in the station like a Russian John Wick, if John Wick was really terrible at his job. Terrible or not, we eventually make it to Bourbon. But when we enter the room, we set off a chain reaction in which the officer guarding Bourbon and Bourbon himself shoot each other and they kill each other. Quite odd, but not as odd as our next friend dropping out of the ceiling. This is Khan, and he's now going to accompany us further into the metro system. And having an extra friend never hurt. Whilst travelling through with Khan, we really get an insight into the odds supernatural entities that are within the metro stations. Khan also seems to have done this many times before, as he is able to move past the shadow monsters and knows this place like the back of his hand. So well in fact that we soon reach another tram and set off to another station. When we step off, the defenders of the station are in a bad way and need help to close off access to the tunnels, so that the attacks stop happening. This of course is up to us, as the Nasalis start to attack. However, here we get our next achievements. The first is for killing 10 enemies without taking damage, which I got completely by accident unlocking Tank. We then blow up two separate parts of the metro entrance so that the Nasalis can't breach it, also unlocking another achievement, Demolitionist. Having helped, Khan then shows us a path that we can take to eventually lead to Polis. However, we arrive at Armory Station, which is controlled by the Red Army. We have a short chase scene as we try to outrun and hide from the Nazi army, being saved by one of Khan's friends, Andrew the Blacksmith. He gives us a disguise and helps us get through the station and back on our way. We hide underneath a rail cart and make our way through a Nazi-controlled area of the Metro. We silently take out all of the enemies that we can and move throughout the Metro. And by silently taking out the enemies with one more bullet to the brain of a Nazi, we unlock two more achievements, killing 30 human enemies with headshots for sniper and 15 enemies headshotted from 15 meters away for marksman. Seconds afterwards, we also have to save a team of our Russian friends. By killing the person interrogating them, they thank us for saving them and we unlock another achievement, Rescue Ranger. We then eventually make it to a door where we are captured and held hostage, but thankfully, they are the kind of enemies
enemies that spend hours talking about killing you and not actually doing it, which gives some more of our allies enough time to sneak up behind them and kill them as well as commenting on their stupidity as well. These two are Ullman and Pavel. We show them Hunter's dog tags and they say they'll escort us further. We then reach a car and take control of the turret on top and begin to mow the Red Army down for even thinking that they can compete with us. In fact, we do so well and for killing 100 human enemies, we unlock the Warrior achievement. Now, burning through these enemies, we eventually make it to a real cart that takes us further throughout, and we fight the Nasalis and humans alike, but they are no match for us. However, the cart does crash, and once again, we are alone and must proceed on foot. We soon make it to yet another entrance, and they're surprised that another human has appeared, but they need all the hands that they can get as there is a horde of Nasalis approaching, and they haven't evacuated everybody inside yet. But the Nasalis don't appear, a bright light does in fact, that knocks everybody back before they can attack and even killing a couple of them. The Nasalis then appear and we shoot them all before yet another gust of wind knocks us over and kills everybody but us. Well, I say everybody, the man on the platform lives long enough for him to give us a tape to warn the others by going to the black station, before he then croaks. We now must go through the station to carry on our venture. And uh, yeah, this part sucks. We eventually make it to a small child, and we hate this small child. We find him sat at his uncle's corpse and begging him to wake up. Instead, we kidnap the child and throw him on our back so that we can take him back to safety. The child is annoying as hell, he doesn't shut up and he makes us move really slow, which is bad on both fronts. However, a couple of minutes later and a few deaths later, we unlock our next achievement, Tonic Man, for using 75 medkits. And eventually, we find his mother and reunite the brat with his mum, who is more than thankful. And since we saved the child's life, they allow us to restock and head to the surface to get to the Black Station. When we leave, we find the usual Nazi patrols and expertly send them to the afterlife. Nothing really to note here other than our next achievement for killing 100 enemies with a revolver for Cowboy, as well as Airbender for killing 50 enemies with pneumatic weapons. We we once again find Ullman though on a motorbike cart thingy and hop inside to head further into the metro. But as we get some well needed rest we have another vision. We're stuck in a bizarre cave with a barricade in front of us. The barricade then shatters and a dark one appears before then we see a beautiful sky and trees full of leaves. And then we're back on the cart having reached the next station. And finally our proper destination as we are finally at Polis. We then officially meet Miller, who thanks us for our bravery and says that he will order an immediate council session to vote on exhibition getting the help that it needs. We enter the council meeting and it goes on for hours, and it results in our request for help getting denied. However, Miller being the lad that he is says that he is going to help us anyway with some of his rangers. Miller then tells us that we need to meet him at a Moscow library and find some documents that might hold information to a military bunker called D6. That has missiles that can help us defeat the Dark Ones. And with that, we have to the surface again. You know how it goes by now folks, we fight Nasalis until we eventually reach the entrance to the library, where again another horde attack and whilst defending ourselves we get our next kill related achievement by killing 50 Watchmen, just a variation of the Nasalis, unlocking Watchman Hunter. We then meet Miller and another ranger, kill the rest and go to head inside. Inside here we also find some new enemy types, they are these rather phallic swinging things that die in a single shot and for a couple of moments we see another enemy, an absolutely massive unit that we would come to learn as a librarian. As we make our way throughout the library though, a demon bursts through the wall and injures the rangers that was with us, once again resulting in us having to continue alone. When we get into the next section, we come face to face with a librarian, a huge mutated ape that is an absolute tank. But we need to kill one, and it does take a little while, but we do just that, unlocking the next achievement, Heavy Reader. We then silently sneak past the rest until we reach a lift. A librarian is about to kill us, but a demon appears at the last second, and instead, they have a huge boxing match that we unfortunately miss as the lift crashes down to the floors below. In the basement, we then also find the records room and finally find the documents that we need about D6 before going to leave. And as we escape though, we are ambushed by a big monkey. But Miller and Ullman in a ranger truck thankfully splat him in the nick of time saving our lives. They then take us to the Sparta base so that we can gear up and head to D6 as a unit. On the cart to D6 though, we once again pass out and have another vision involving the Dark Ones. But it only lasts a few seconds this time and we wake back in the truck and arrive to once again make it through the metro to reach D6. It's more of the same that came before, we kill waves of Nasalis as we make it through the station. However, we also pick up a couple more achievements here as well. The first is for killing 100 Nasalis altogether, for Nasalis Hunter, and for killing 100 enemies with a shotgun, we also gain Gunman. 
and we also unlocked Hunter for killing 200 Nasalis total. Carrying on through though, we unfortunately lose an ally and get separated from the group. This time we also face a new type of spider enemy. They are armoured, but they are allergic to light, so with our flashlight and our flamethrower, they are no match for us, even if they are a bit creepy. We eventually make it back to the group, and then a bizarre sound starts to echo through the tunnels. And for once, it's something nice, a fully working automatic train system. We of course hop on board as soon as possible. We then take the train straight to D6 and head to the controls with Miller to see if the place is still operational. We do get partial power and then go to head to the control centre to see what the situation is. When we get there, things are fine, but we need to get the reactor back online for the systems to fully work. So we and Miller head down to the lower levels to get it back on. Here we also face another new type of enemy, these squishy horrible blobs called amoebas. They are dead easy to kill but they also do pack quite a punch and can burn you with acid rather violently. And we also get our next achievement here, Pathanandad... what? This word for killing 5. But don't fear, as for killing 30 enemies with the flamethrower, we also unlock a next achievement, this time Pyro. However, we carry on to the bottom and we find something called the Biomass, a disgusting blob on top of the reactor that is responsible for all of the icky down here. Now we need to head to the crane to get the fuel rods to work in order to get the reactor back online. We do just that, even with the Biomass shooting acid at us, and we meet up with Miller again to head back to the group. We find them, grab a laser designator so that we can climb to the top of a tall tower and activate it, ending the Dark Ones once and for all. We are then taken straight back to the start of the game where we nearly got ran over. Our mission was to head to the tower for this laser. We know what happens here, we're ambushed but avoid dying ourselves with Miller and eventually make it to the tower. We hitch a ride to the top of the lift but it breaks before we can fully make it to the very top and then we start to slowly climb the wreckage to get there. We meet Miller again just in time as he is then attacked by a demon. We slow-mo save his life and burn the demon to a crisp unlocking Inquisitor for killing two demons. Now Miller is injured unfortunately and once again it's up to us to save the day. We make it to the top and place the laser down perfectly on the home of the Dark Ones but knowing their end is near we have another vision and this by far is the most intense as hordes of Dark Ones try to cripple our mind in order to stop us. It doesn't work unfortunately and as we get fed up with running we finally shoot the Dark One plaguing our mind and end these games once and for all. We appear back on top of the tower unlocking Survivor 2033 for completing the game as well as if it's hostile you'll kill it for becoming a true ranger whatever that means. And with that, the missiles are launched and absolutely demolish the Dark One's home. As it burns, the camera pans away, and that's Metro. Now, you may notice we don't have that many achievements, actually. Well, now it's time for the hilariously fun time to grind the rest that we need before we play through the game again one more time for a different ending on a different difficulty. Now, to grind these missions, we basically replayed the same levels over and over again to work our way through them. And this is what I would honestly recommend to take care of the achievements, otherwise you will be here for days. Is. And for most of the achievements that I'm about to tackle, we got them by replaying a mission called Frontline, as this mission has a lot of enemies and a lot of resources. So, let's go through the list now, and this is going to be a pretty extensive list, so brace yourselves and let's begin as I rapid fire them all at you right now. <clears throat> the first achievement we unlocked was for killing 30 enemies with throwing knives for Ninja. After that, we get Hedgehopper for killing every enemy in Frontline, and then Invisible Man for completing the same mission, this time killing no one. We then kill 20 Lurkers for fire in the hole, and exchange 500 military grade rounds at a kiosks for Wheeler Dealer. An easy way to cheese this one is by buying and selling basic ammo until it unlocks. Trigger Happy was next for killing 100 enemies with assault rifles, and now if you remember back when the guy gave us the tape after the Nasalis attack, we forgot to actually play the tape. This time we remembered, played the warning message and unlocked DJ Artyom. Oh and folks, you better be comfy because we're nowhere near done yet. Next was for killing 30 enemies with flame grenades for fire, followed very quickly by Kaboom for exploding 30 enemies as well. Next was for making 30 deals in weapon shops, we unlocked Metro Trader. After that we drank 3 times throughout the game for toast, and then for killing 15 enemies with stealth we unlocked Snake, as well as Slice and Dice for killing 30 enemies in close combat, and Stunning for knocking out 30 enemies is in close combat as well. And nope, we're still not done yet, folks. Next was for killing 10 of the spiders for the aptly named Spider Hunter achievement. Then for disarming 15 wire traps, we unlocked Soft Touch and Thief for looting 15 safes. The next we unlocked was indeed a bastard, though. In the intro mission, when the Nasalis first swarm the room with Hunter, we have to kill every enemy before they break a grate off the walls. This took me a good hour to get, as it seems almost very RNG related on how many spawned and how long it took them to break through. So yeah, this one was definitely one of the 
the harder ones, but we eventually got it unlocking Quick Draw. After that, we completed the level Black Station without killing or knocking out any enemies for Merciful, which was easier than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. After that, we had another really easy achievement for silently killing this guard on the tracks during Depot for Raider. Oh, we are getting there though, folks. Not many more now. Shocking was next for killing 30 enemies with the gun Hellbreath, soon followed by Generous for helping people in the metro stations with a spare coin. Oh, well, bullet, I guess, in this universe. Then for standing for 60 seconds in a radiation hotspot, we unlocked the Manhattan Project. Blogger was next for finding all of Artyom's journals in the game. After that was Weaponsmith for killing an enemy with every gun in the game. And finally, in the level Dead City, there are about 52 ranger stashes hidden around the level, from dead bodies to full offices of supplies. We had to find every single one. It did take us a little while, but we eventually unlocked it and unlocked Ranger. And that's all the grindy achievements. The last three we're gonna get for going through the game again, this time on Spartan difficulty and getting the good ending, and for collecting 1,000 of the military grade rounds throughout the playthrough as well. But the only thing I really need to say about the second playthrough is getting the enlightened ending. Now, throughout Metro 2033, you can gain moral points by being a nice guy and helping people. And for the enlightened ending, we need to get a certain amount for an event to trigger. The moral points can be from simply having a conversation with somebody through going through entire levels without killing anybody. So with that, I set off. Eventually, we did indeed manage to collect 1,000 military grade rounds as well towards the end of the game, and as I approached the tower again, I was terrified that I didn't get enough moral points. Now, I knew the trigger on how to get the enlightened ending. Basically, after the last vision, you were at the top of the tower and an extra part is meant to play in which you have the chance to shoot down the laser targeting system off the tower and choose peace instead of violence. And when we escaped the vision and Spartan 2033 popped without that chance, I honestly thought we'd missed it. And death only brings death. Oh, to shit. Circle, one must do more than just act without any thought or doubt. 20 seconds to home procedure completion. Oh! But indeed, we got enlightened, unlocked, and with that, we have done everything that there is to do in Metro 2033, and with that, the grind is over. Now, Metro 2033 was a hell of an experience for me. I loved the settings and the atmosphere and the enemies, and the gunplay was really good for a game of its age. However, I must admit that the story and the characters were a little bit bland for me, and I feel like for the most part, the gameplay was fun and engaging, but it did start to feel fairly repetitive and almost boring towards the end. I think that this game could have been an hour shorter and then would have been much better in my opinion. Don't get me wrong though, I really did enjoy this game and I'm very happy to have gone through it, but I won't be returning for for a long time now, I think. However, now let's get to the all important stats with achievement now spelt correctly. For Metro 2033, it took us just over 22 hours to grind all 49 achievements that the game has to offer. I'm going to be giving this game a decent 6.5 out of 10, but I do have very high hopes for Last Light and Exodus, when we cover them both eventually. For difficulty, I'm going to be giving this game a 4 out of 10 though, as there are a couple of fiddly achievements and some collectibles to grab, but with two playthroughs needed, a ton of grinding specific achievements, I feel like 4 is a fair call. With the hardest achievement for me personally being Enlightened as well, as there's no indication that you're going to get it without just completing the game and just hoping for the best because if you don't get it you'll have to play the entire game again and that's metro now don't worry folks i will of course be covering last light and exodus eventually but i will be taking a short break from metro so that i can finish some other series as well but make sure to join back next week as we play through probably the most adorable game of all time where we control one of the cutest cats as we try to return to the surface to make it back to our group, also meeting some awesome robots and deadly threats along the way. So make sure you come back next week for the straight achievement grind. And thank you all so much for watching, I really do hope you enjoyed and I pray that I have done Metro 2033 justice, after all it is the most requested vid on my channel so far. So yeah, I hope I did it right by you folks. And of course, don't forget to swing by my Twitch as well where we do the achievements grind live, it would be awesome to have you, but I have rambled for far too long. Thank you all again. Take care of yourselves and bye-bye for now.